Elon Musk just doubled down on SpaceX's unwavering determination to achieve their ambitious goal. But here's the exciting news. They've made massive upgrades to their water deluge system, tackling the biggest obstacle in their path. Join us as we explore the thrilling advancements in store for the second orbital test flight at Starbase Texas. Let's begin! The world just witnessed the first Starship rocket, complete with its brand new design, being put to the test by SpaceX back in April. The rocket embarked on a brief flight before encountering a setback, a loss of thrust that led to its intentional destruction. While the cause of this failure is still under investigation, it appears that the Starship faced some challenges when separating from the super heavy booster. The result? A spectacular display of fireworks over the Gulf of Mexico, courtesy of SpaceX. But don't worry, SpaceX is undeterred. They're already hard at work on the next iteration of the Starship, aiming for a smoother and more successful flight. Simultaneously, they're also busy repairing the launch site, which took quite a beating from the explosive event. Interestingly enough, the massive crater created by the explosion has proven useful for digging and installing new equipment. Perhaps more craters could be in the cards for future endeavors. Let's take a closer look at the latest rendering by Ryan Hansen Space, showcasing the current state of SpaceX's water deluge system. The rendering reveals the assembly of three manifolds, indicating that only three sides of the steel sandwich will have water inlets. The large manifold boasts a five-foot inlet with 18 securely welded nipples. These nipples are strategically positioned along the top and side, each connected to tubes that reach the outer edge and bottom of the steel sandwich. Shielding will be added to cover the top row of tubes for optimal protection. Moving on to the medium manifold, it features a four-foot diameter inlet angled downward. Similar to the large manifold, it contains 18 nipples with welded tubes connecting to the steel sandwich in the same configuration. Shielding will also be provided to ensure its safeguarding. The small manifold, on the other hand, is a three-foot diameter pipe accommodating 16 nipples distributed at different locations. Notably, some inlet tubes alternate in size, combining smaller and larger tubes. All 16 tubes connect to the outer edge of the steel sandwich. Additionally, this manifold has its own distinct shaped shielding tailored to its specifications. Upon careful examination, it becomes apparent that the small manifold is best suited for placement on one side due to its specific design that aligns with existing dimensional limitations. Its elbow welded onto the end of the pipe is perfectly positioned for optimal direction. With its five-foot pipe, the large manifold needs to be connected to the remaining open side of the Y assembly. Surprisingly, by placing the manifold along this edge, it aligns flawlessly with the Y assembly, eliminating the need for extensive modifications. Only a small section of piping will be required to complete the connection. By positioning the large and small manifolds on alternating edges, it confirms the hypothesis that every other edge will be equipped with an inlet manifold. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of SpaceX's water deluge system, we discover a clever arrangement that leaves one edge open on the north side of the launch mount, specifically designed for the placement of the medium manifold. This remarkable insight into the system was made possible thanks to the efforts of Ryan Hansen, whose remarkable knowledge has been generously shared with us. We extend our gratitude to him and highly recommend following him for the latest updates on the incredible endeavors unfolding at Starbase. Indeed, this water deluge system is truly unique, and we hope SpaceX can swiftly complete its implementation. Will it be accomplished this month, or perhaps the next? Place your bets in the comments section below! Of course, all this work is in preparation for the next Starship launch, which faces several hurdles, including securing another launch license from the FAA and potentially dealing with a lawsuit. However, constructing the next rocket won't be one of those obstacles. Starship 25, having been rolled to the launch site and stacked on one of the two suborbital test stands, has undergone several cryogenic fueling tests. It is likely to undergo further tests as it progresses towards becoming the potential next flight-ready Starship. Additionally, Booster 9 has been stacked and is currently situated inside the high bay. Numerous other boosters and ships are at various stages of assembly, 
showcasing SpaceX's ability to maintain a rich hardware inventory during Starship's development. This approach ensures that the loss of a vehicle does not impede progress, as there is always another one nearing completion. As for Elon Musk's ambitious timeline, only time will tell. This is SpaceX we're talking about, where the workforce is capable of accomplishing remarkable feats in short periods. However, considering past experiences, it would be wise not to plan any trips to Brownsville solely based on a tweet. There's no doubt that the second launch of Starship will be greatly influenced by various key factors that play a critical role in its success. One of the primary considerations is the implementation of design improvements based on insights gained from previous tests and flights. SpaceX has been meticulously analyzing data and conducting thorough evaluations to refine the Starship's design. These improvements encompass various aspects of the rocket, including its aerodynamics, structural integrity, and propulsion systems. Specific modifications may involve adjustments to the shape of the rocket, optimizing the fuel efficiency, enhancing the thermal protection system, and fine-tuning the overall flight dynamics. Additionally, the success of the second launch will heavily rely on the effectiveness of the separation mechanism between the Starship and its Super Heavy booster. SpaceX engineers are working diligently to address any challenges encountered during the previous launch attempts. One of the significant issues observed in earlier tests was the unscrewing problem, where the Starship faced difficulties in separating itself from the booster. This led to an unstable flight and, ultimately, the purposeful destruction of the rocket. To overcome this obstacle, engineers have been implementing solutions to ensure a smoother and more reliable separation process. These could involve modifying the coupling mechanisms, enhancing the separation thrust, or introducing new technologies to facilitate a seamless detachment between the Starship and the booster. Now, shifting our focus to another intriguing piece of news, Rocket Lab recently made waves with the launch of the first suborbital variant of its Electron rocket, known as the Hypersonic Accelerator Suborbital Test Electron, HASTE. Operating under a veil of secrecy, Rocket Lab successfully lifted off the vehicle from Launch Complex 2 at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport on Wallops Island, Virginia. The launch, which took place at 9.24 p.m. Eastern, was declared a resounding success nearly an hour and a half later. Peter Beck, the chief executive of Rocket Lab, proudly announced a 100% mission success for this groundbreaking flight of the nation's newest hypersonic test platform. Rocket Lab's recent launch of the Hypersonic Accelerator Suborbital Test Electron, HASTE, has left many intrigued as the company maintained an unprecedented level of secrecy surrounding the mission. Details regarding the payload, peak altitude, and speed of the flight were not disclosed. Unlike previous orbital electron launches, both from Wallops and Rocket Lab's launch complex one in New Zealand, which were publicized well in advance, the haste launch had minimal pre-announcement and lacked a webcast. Only airspace restrictions published by the Federal Aviation Administration and a tweet from NASA's Wallops flight facility hinted at the launch period. Even the Wallops Visitor Center, usually open for public viewing during launches, remained closed. This heightened level of secrecy sets haste apart from previous missions. Even launches for national security customers, such as the National Reconnaissance Office, were typically announced in advance and broadcasted. Rocket Lab initially announced the Haste project in April, revealing that it entailed minor modifications to the standard Electron rocket, mainly focusing on strength and structure. The vehicle is designed to accommodate payloads of up to 700 kilograms for suborbital tests. In an interview following the announcement, Rocket Lab's CEO, Peter Beck, expressed anticipation of significant demand from the Defense Department for hypersonics testing and target applications. Beck highlighted the cost, frequency, and unprecedented accuracy of obtaining exact trajectories through haste. Furthermore, Rocket Lab expects to achieve greater economies of scale for haste as it shares similarities with the standard Electron rocket. The company aims to leverage increased production numbers to reduce costs, as Beck emphasized during the April announcement. 
Wallops, known for its suitability as a test and research range, will exclusively host future Haste launches, aligning with its core mission. During a recent earnings call, Rocket Lab projected a total of 15 Electron launches in 2023, encompassing both orbital missions and Haste flights. However, specific details regarding the split between the two types of missions were not disclosed. The recent Haste launch marked the sixth Electron launch of the year, demonstrating Rocket Lab's continued momentum in the industry. So, do you think Starship is ready for a second launch with the upgrades in Water Deluge system? Share with us in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. Also, if you're a fan of all things technology, be sure to check out this other video we've got lined up for you. It's packed with all the latest news, tips, and tricks to keep you ahead of the curve.